Now that your Athena is installed and ready for action, let's learn how to operate it. The first thing you'll want to do is position the stainless steel drinking spout over the sink. The next operation would be to learn how to use the diverter. We'll start by turning the faucet on to a nice flow and flipping the diverter lever from left to right. Now you'll notice nothing's coming out of the diverter. It's being diverted to your Athena. So once again, left and the water flows out of the tap all the way to the right. Nothing comes out of the tap and the, the water goes to your Athena. We'll move this so you can have a clear view of the controls on the Athena. To start water flow to your Athena, we'll turn our attention to the water flow control valve. This is a valve just like on your faucet. In the off position, all the way to the right, the water's stopped from entering the machine. In the open position, all the way to the left, it's fully on and it gives you a range of options in between. This is a great feature to improve and fine tune the performance of your machine. So for right now, we'll just turn it on to a nice easy flow, about two thirds between on and off. You'll notice the type of water is confirmed by, by voice and here in this case it's purified as indicated by the green LEDs on the screen. When the water first comes out in purified mode or in alkaline, because it's a granulated activated carbon filter there will be some dust buildup inside. Just let the water run for one to two minutes to flush this dust. That's absolutely normal with a carbon filter. Now to select alkaline water, you simply depress the alkaline button. Alkaline water selected. You'll hear the voice confirmation and you'll notice the blue LEDs indicating the alkaline colors and the level that you have selected indicated numerically here. Now when you're in alkaline setting, you'll get alkaline water out of the flexible tube and your acidic waste out of the gray tube. In purified, it's interesting to note that nothing comes out of the gray tube, only the purified water out of the flexible stainless steel spout. To adjust the alkaline setting to a different level, simply depress the alkaline button until the level is achieved that you desire. Alkaline water selected. And you'll note that the level is indicated here. To select acidic, it's much like using the alkaline button. You simply depress the acidic button You'll see the LEDs indicate that by the red lights. And again, the level is indicated here. Now when you're in acidic mode, acidic water will come out of the stainless steel spout and alkaline water will come out the gray tube into the sink. To change the acidic level, it's just like with the alkaline, depress it until the desired setting is achieved and you'll note the level indicated here. The last button on the control panel is the filter button. This controls the filter life indicator from filter 1 to filter 2. Right now we're in filter 1 and it's reading about 30. We'll depress the filter indicator. That moves it to filter 2 here and shows that we have a filter count of 23 on filter position 2. The numbers will never correspond exactly this filter is designed to take up some of the, the, the initial filtering requirements to save your ever important biostone filter. To turn the ionizer off, you have a few different options. You can turn it off with the flow control valve by turning it to the off position, or you can simply turn off the faucet or flip the diverter. So turning it off with the flow control would look like this. Turning it off with the diverter, we would just flip the diverter and the water would now come out of your faucet. And then you just simply turn the faucet off. This comes with your ionizer, this little bottle and uh, has a colorful chart with it and Jay would you tell us exactly how to use, I like it. I like it very much here. Sure, Katira. That's the pH reagent test kit and it's very important
to learn and master the use of this to get the most out of your ionizer. Okay. Let's start by talking about the different pH levels as indicated by the colors on the pH color chart that's included in your reagent kit. The warmer colors indicate acidic water while the cooler colors indicate the alkaline water. The first test tube has an orange color in it which would be about a 4 pH. Remember the colors are just an approximation, they're not exact but they're very close to the actual pH. 4 to 5 pH water demonstrates mild sterilization and wonderful astringent properties and has a bunch of great uses. You can use it while brushing your teeth, you can gargle with it, you can use it as a natural mouthwash and because it's a good astringent you can use it for washing your face or as a natural aftershave and some house plants actually love it because rainwater is acidic. The next test tube has a green color which would be about a 7 on the pH color chart indicating neutral, neither acidic nor alkaline. Most tap water in the United States tests between 6.5 and 7.5 someplace in that range so this green color is what your Athena will produce when it's on the purified setting. Remember always take prescription medications and make infant formula with the purified setting. The next test tube has blue which indicates about an 8 pH on the color chart. You'll want to start drinking your alkaline water with a nice blue color. You'll want to give yourself five to seven days to adjust to the increase in alkalinity in your water by staying at that blue level. Once you're comfortable at that level you can move to the next level which would be indicated by a violet color in this test tube or about a 9 on the pH color chart. This is the water I like to drink. Just as with the blue you'll want to give your body time to adjust with the violet. Another five to seven days or until you're comfortable and then if you want you can experiment with the higher levels of alkalinity although there's no reason to believe that the higher levels produce exponentially better health results. As a matter of fact most people find that the stronger the water the less pleasant it tastes. I like to drink a 9 pH. It tastes great and provides me all the wonderful health benefits. If you're cooking with the water you will want to use the stronger pH 10 or above and it's fantastic for doing vegetables, cooking rice, grains, or making tea and coffee. Understanding how to test pH in your water is crucial to understanding the performance of your Athena ionizer. Different areas of the country have very different tap waters. For instance, in some areas of the country we have hard tap water, which is water that's high in calcium, and that water will tend to measure very high in pH as high as sometimes 8 or even a little higher. Other areas of the country have soft water, water that's very low in calcium and these waters will tend to measure very low on the pH scale. Some well water measures as low as 5 pH. Your ionizer will have to work that much harder to alter the water when there's not much calcium in it for the machine to work with. So crucial to understanding the performance of your ionizer is understanding your tap water. So the reagent bag that came in the styrofoam lid of your ionizer has a few parts in it. It's got a spare fuse. You'll want to save this and put it in a safe place in case you ever have to replace the fuse. It's got a pH color chart which has an adhesive backing to it. And I'm just going to place this on the machine right here for the purposes of our testing. And then of course it's got the reagent drops themselves which are the red liquid drops. The top of the styrofoam packaging also has three glass test tubes and I'm going to use one of those here to test the tap water. Testing the pH is going to be the same whether we're testing tap water, or acidic water, or alkaline water. And to do that, to test properly, we're going to fill the test tube up about half. It doesn't have to be precise but approximately half and then we'll place three or four drops of the reagent into the water, shake it up, and compare to the color chart 
And you can see that's a pretty solid green color, which indicates a pH of around 7. So now let's test some various setting levels of alkaline water. To do this, we'll turn the machine on to a nice easy flow, about half. Alkaline water selected. And we're going to test a level 2 pH. So we'll fill the test tube up about half. Add our three or four drops. Shake it up. And now you can see that that's a nice solid blue color, which would be an eight, maybe an eight and a half. Now we'll test a higher level of alkalinity. Let's skip all the way up to four and show you the difference. Alkaline water selected. We'll rinse the test tube out. Fill it up again about half. Three or four drops. Shake it up. And you can see that that's a nice dark purple. That's probably in excess of 10, I'd guess, somewhere around a 10 and a half. Most people wouldn't want to drink this level of alkalinity. Some do. Next, I'd like to show you a crucial concept and demonstrate this for you. Flow rate has a very definite impact on performance in your ionizer. A very fast flow rate and the water is not processing in the machine for very long and won't receive very much alteration. A very slow flow rate means the water is in there processing for a long time. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to turn the flow on to about a medium. Alkaline water selected. We're going to select alkaline level 2 and we'll start by testing the water at this baseline measurement. Filling it up about, about half. Adding our drops. And again, you can see that that's a nice solid blue color, maybe an eight and a half. Now without adjusting the alkaline setting, I'm going to slow the flow down. You can notice the slower flow by the reduced amount coming out of your spout, almost a trickle. We'll fill the tube up about half again and add our three or four drops and shake it up and now you can see that that water is purple. I haven't adjusted the alkaline setting, I've simply adjusted the flow rate. So use the flow control valve as a way to fine tune your performance. Slower flow, more alteration, higher pH, fast flow, lower pH, it's very simple. In the manual, it says you can add extra calcium. Uh, when would I do that, and can you say something about that? Sure, Katira, that's a great question. Most areas of the country have plenty of naturally occurring calcium in the tap water already, so you won't ever need to add calcium. In areas where the, water, the tap water is very soft, say a pH of 6 or lower, you'll need to add calcium to help boost the performance of the machine. It's very simple. Let me show you how to do that. Great. Thank you. To replace the calcium, we'll begin by twisting the silver cap at the top of the port and removing. It may be sticky the first or second time, so simply use a butter knife to gently pry it up and remove the, the assembly. Then you simply twist the basket Remove it from the cap. Get your replacement basket out. Remove the cap from the replacement basket. Insert the basket into the cap. Put the basket and the cap back into the port and twist it to lock it. It's important that you get a tight seal by twisting it to make sure that water won't leak out of the top. If you find that you do need to add the calcium to boost the performance of your machine, the calcium will come in vials when you originally purchase your machine. But as you repurchase calcium, 
they'll come in small red vials or jars that you can use to simply refill the empty basket so that you can reuse the basket over and over again. You know, I really like that water and I like to take it with me wherever I go. What is the best way to store it? I take it with me wherever I go as well. There's a few tips. Let me explain those to you. There's definitely an order of preference when considering containers to store your water. And they're shown here in order of desirability, starting with the least desirable, which are the soft plastics, like the number one PET recyclable bottles as indicated by the one in the triangle on the bottom. These are least desirable. Next, you've got the hard plastic or Lexan or polycarbonate, which is indicated by a seven inside the triangle on the bottom. These are better than the soft plastics. Better than either plastic is glass. Glass is totally non-reactive and a better vessel than the two plastics. There's a lot of research that suggests the plastic leaches harmful agents into the water as it's stored in plastic. But best for anything to store the water is the Ironways proprietary bottle. It preserves the healthful qualities longer than glass and certainly longer than either of the plastics. So the ideal way to store the water is to fill the container all the way to the top with as little air as possible at the top and if you can keep the water cool it's ideal to keep it in a refrigerator and out of the sunlight that will help preserve the the quality in the water but the best is to drink the water straight out of the machine that way the healthful qualities are at their peak that's it